Welcome to Bill. Thank you. We are so excited to have you here today, and we're all bopping here. around to your new single, Dime. It's kind of impossible not to dance to it, right? That's really, I'm, that's so good to hear. Right? I, that's what I wanted. I wanted everybody just to like feel good while listening and have a great time. So. It is, but it's also an empowering song, too. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about the meaning behind it? Yeah, I kind of, I wanted it to be something um, that people felt really good good listening to. You know what I mean? I wanted them to dance in their car and in the mirror and just like understand that they are beautiful and amazing. And I think the world especially needs that right now. And um, I think also just confidence in general. It's really good to be confident in your abilities and who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of what I wanted the song to be about. And it was kind of my like sassy, sweet way of saying like, get out if you're not going to be nice to me. So Seriously, I think that comes into play a ton of times when it comes to relationships. Uh, can you speak to that? Because relationships are hard. Oh, trust me, I know. Yeah. I'm only 19 and I already know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, they're hard. They're hard, especially as like a young adult and I have this like full blown career and so like traveling is hard and you're not really in one place a lot. Um, but yeah, relationships in general are just difficult. I mean, it's, it's kind of like learning to live and be with someone other than yourself and learning what that person likes and wants and needs and um, kind of, you know, being kind and compassionate toward that person as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes it's really um, confusing at first to kind of give a part of yourself to someone. Um, and this is kind of about somebody taking advantage of that. Um, and that's why I wrote the song. I just, I kind of wanted, no matter like who you are in a relationship or what your partner does to you, um, you know, anything, you know, can hurt you. Anything can hurt a person. And sometimes people don't even realize that they're doing you wrong. And um, Dime was like my, like again, like my, my kind of nice but sassy way of being like, get out, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> You're not nice. I don't like that. I don't need that energy. Yeah, but that that goes back to being strong and being like, yes, I'm not going to and empowered. Take yeah, and yeah, empowered as a, yeah. as a female. Yes. Um, do you feel like you look for a specific specific things in a relationship? And if so, what are they? Yes, um, I do. Yeah, I just look for um, someone fun, obviously, like that just wants to go. I'm so I say like, let's go do something crazy. I never do anything crazy. <laughs> I'm like queen of like Netflix and food. <laughs> like that's what I do for fun. But um, yeah, I definitely I look for somebody who's kind to others. Uh, because it's really easy for somebody to be kind to you if they like you. But if you notice they're not being kind to other people, that's always, in my opinion, a red flag. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and I really, that's such a good question. I've never really answered relationship questions Ooh, before. This is interesting. Getting deep right getting away. Getting deep <laughs> is my 19-year-old self. Um, yeah, no, I think uh, definitely kindness. And then I also look for somebody who um, really supports me fully. And um, and that goes both ways. Like, I want to support the person as well. Um, and I, I've definitely been in situations of like, hey, like, where are are you? What happened? What's going on? And it's kind of like, I'm sorry, I'm in New York for two days and I had to work and go do this. And, you know, it's somebody that's really willing to be flexible and, um, you know, good with you and what you do and who fully supports everything you do. And trust. Trust is a huge thing. Um, it's hard to just trust anyone and trust somebody, especially with your heart. Um, and building trust is very difficult. So that's, yeah, I think it was like the top three. Especially for someone who's on the road a lot, who's yeah. touring or who's, you know, bouncing around on sets, yeah. et cetera. I'm sure that's a huge thing for it's, you. Yeah, it's very, it's difficult. It's it's a lot too. And with our busy schedules, um, like, you know what I mean? Depending on who I'm dating at the time or who I think that I like, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you're young, you will like a lot of, you're like, oh, you're cute, you're cute too. Oh, I like you too, you know what I mean? So I think it's just about kind of, um, when you do find that person, just really balancing both of your lives together. That's cool. Well, I think the song speaks to a lot of that. Uh, and I know you co-wrote it with AJR, right? I did. Yeah. I love them. So how did that co-write go come about? That's so funny. So we're label mates. Mm -hmm. And um, the head of our label, Steve Greenberg, who is also just the coolest person ever, he was like, hey, you guys should get together. And I was kind of nervous because I was like, oh, they're awesome. I love them. I love their songs. And um, we were just kind of put into a room like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is what we came up with. Um, and we, we kind of knew we wanted to do something empowering because that's kind of my vibe and that's what I wanted to say. And I knew I wanted to do something a little bit more upbeat and like funner for this like first out the gate, like I'm back, you know what I mean? So um, hearing it back, I, this is like the eighth version that everyone's finally hearing. Um, I'm a perfectionist, so that was really hard. I was like, I don't know what I want to choose. I don't know what I want where. I don't know what sounds to use. Um, and the first version I got back, I just, I hated it. Huh. I was like, this is not right. This is weird. I don't know how to feel about it. And we like went back and forth and back and forth. and. But yeah, I think um, it was a really good writing experience because they're so beyond talented. And Ryan is like the main producer. Uh -huh. So good. Like, 
so good. It was a blast. Did you feel like you learned from them? I learned a lot. I learned, that's a great question. I learned from so many people that I work with, even every day, um, just like new things about myself and how I work and about how other people work and new um, little things, little techniques that I can use in the future. Uh, but yeah, I learned a lot from them. And I also, what I learn a lot in, in sessions is like, nothing's too weird. Yeah. Like, if you want to put some weird sample or sound and pitch it up or pitch it really low, like, you can do so many different things with music. Um, and I think that's really important to know. And I guess I knew that, but it's kind of, like, the same as, you know, putting on a new, like, outfit. You know, you can mix and match and do anything you want because it's you. So I think that's really how music is, too. Absolutely. Well, I love the video to go, that goes along with it. And I understand you. you had a, a, quite a bit of a say what that was going to be about and the treatment of it, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. And what, were your, what was your vision going into it? Um, I knew that Dimes sounded very much like a very cheery, she's walking down a sidewalk type song. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I want it to be different. I want it to be something that nobody's really done yet. And um, I got a several treatments from different directors and I uh, decided on this one because it was at a drive-in movie theater and it was at night and it was cool and it was kind of eerie and dark and uh, we were kind of up until probably like two days before the shoot we were like debating what to put on the screen because I know I kind of wanted to do a play on the 90s but a modern version so mm -hmm. I had like the baggy pants and the sports bra and the top of the like um, underwear peeking out you know like with the band and I kind of wanted that feel and that vibe and my dancers kind of had some 90s-esque clothing on um, and so I kind of had that planned out but it, the whole question the whole time was what are we putting on the screen yeah. and Steve Greenberg the head of our label came through with like, well, we're at a drive-in movie theater. It's a horror film. And we were like, okay, this sounds great. But the funny part was when we got there, we realized, oh, it's 108 degrees in Riverside today. And there's a werewolf in a werewolf costume. And it was literally like this thick. And this poor man, every time they yelled cut, I made him take the hat off and get water because I was worried he was going to faint. It was so hot. And I was hot. And I was in this little dress. So it was like, I know that you're dying right now. Totally. Like, I understand. So, um, but it was a really good shoot and it was so positive and happy and um, the whole vibe was so great and yeah, it was fun. It was just fun and I'm so proud of it. Like, it was really a nice, I I come back, you know, it was a good comeback. I, I, I came back, I was like, this is me, this is grown Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> grown, I'm like still 19, but you know. Well, you also dance in the in the video too, yeah. uh, and we don't see you dance too often. Nope. So unless it's funny on Snapchat. <laughs> so what was that like, dancing for the first time in, you know, professional sort of way? Yeah, it was wild. I was so nervous. I went in for choreography uh, like two days before, and um, we just like did some movement, and we choreographed most most of it, but when I got on set, we finished, and it was kind of this like touch and go. I walked out of the door and was like, let's go. I was like, I'm winging it. I'm just going to pretend I've got this, and I think it worked. It, well, so, it worked. I was I like, I can do it. It's fine. <laughs> Is this a, um, uh, an indication of what we're going to see on, on like for new music on an album? Yeah, I think so. Um, Dime is definitely a little different than um, what my EP is going to be. Okay. Um, it's, it's the most cheery and upbeat, um, happy kind of vibe. Um, my music is definitely leaning more R&B. Okay. Like more R&B, more. Um, I'm kind of trying to come back with this 90s TLC vibe. I really am feeling that right now. And that was kind of what I took these last few years to figure out was what, what do I want to say? when I come back, like what is this project? Because the really cool thing about music today is you don't have to stick to exactly one thing and you can change it up per project. Um, and you can change things up and figure out what you want to hear and like what you're thinking about rather than what other people want from you. Um, and I just, I was listening back to some music that I've been doing and I'm just, I'm very proud of it. I think it's something that says, this is who I am and this is what I've wanted. Um, because it's very easy for you to start believing everything everyone else tells you about yourself. So that was really cool to like figure that out. So who is Rachel Crow today? Good question. Um, she is an, she's adulting, which means I'm not actually an adult, <laughs> but I'm trying to be. Um, she is... I don't know. She's kind of crazy. I'm going to be really honest with you. She's kind of wild. She's kind of crazy. She's kind of fun. Um, I'm very focused. I'm very focused right now on myself and my career. And um, 
I love my family, and they have been with me for this whole crazy ride, of course, and my mom's backstage right now. Hi, Mama, I love you. Um, and I think that it's just important that people kind of see this person, and I'm just, I'm, I'm very confident in myself, but I'm also like, I'm very humbled by all of my experiences, and I'm very grateful for where I am right now. Do you feel like that's challenging? Because a lot of people, of course, got to know you on The X Factor yeah. when you were just 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you grew up a lot in the last six years. What's that, you know, how do you come to terms with that being who you are now and how people knew you then? Yeah, I, uh, I answer this question a lot. It's, I mean, it's very easy to start feeling yourself when everybody's telling you how great you are. You know what I mean? Um, and to start believing that and becoming somebody that you maybe don't want to be. And especially as a 13-year-old, because at that age, you're so impressionable and you take everything everyone says and you just soak it in. Um, and so it was a rough time for me. I was just very caught up in that life and I realized that I wasn't who I wanted to be or where I wanted to be. And so I kind of took a little time off when I was like 16 um, and I just like took time to breathe yeah. and realized what I wanted. And I remembered that music is like living for me. Like it comes through my soul. I was actually just, I was talking to you. I was watching Leanne Rhymes, who I love. And <laughs> she was saying music is like breathing. And, and that's for me too. Um, for some people, music is a choice. And for me, it's something that I don't get to choose every day. It just is. Yeah. It's like, I wouldn't be here without that. So that's how I feel about it. And um, I think it's definitely good to kind of remember where I came from, how this all happened, and accept it and go forward and, you know, be this person. Yeah, speaking of breathing, I feel like I read somewhere that your first song that you were singing, you were like 18 months years, 18 months old. Yeah. Right? Right, really? Yeah. I mean, do you rem You probably don't remember that moment, but you hear about it a yeah, lot. Yeah, I don't mom. remember it at all, <laughs> <laughs> but my mom talks about it all the time. And so you were like 18 months old and you were singing a Faith Hill song? Yeah, I was singing Breathe by Faith Hill, okay. just screaming it with all of myself. <laughs> because, you know, I was little back then, I was like this big. <laughs> Nothing has really changed, to be honest. I'm still pretty <laughs> short. But um, yeah, I would just, I will, I would just, with all of me, just scream, breathe by Faith Hill, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but my mama says so, so I believe her. So no videotape of that. No, no I don't, I, you know, I was asked that today, and yeah. I don't know. We should ask her. Yeah. We should She's backstage. That. We'll have to ask her right come after on, this. Come on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she would freak out. <laughs> so, but you did start performing, though, at a very young age, yes. right? I mm -hmm. mean, you were how old? Five, six years old when you were doing... Always, actually. Yeah. I just kind of loved, well, obviously, like I was saying, I, music was just kind of a part of me, always. It's never been like, and also it's funny because because of that, I didn't really think I was an artist, per se, in the beginning. I just kind of always loved music. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a star one day and do this. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, oh, this is this is what I do. You know yeah. what I mean? This is, a, this is me. And um, so I originally, I was telling my mom, like, I'm, I was in school and I was being bullied and I was depressed and I was just not happy where I was in my little town. And I told her, I was like, I got to get out of here. I want to go to California and I want to be on TV. So I, I wanted to act originally because not because I didn't sing every second of every day, but just because I'm, I don't know. I just wanted, I thought that's what I would be better at for some reason. Um, and acting is, is acting is good. It's my one of my favorite things to do but it's also something I really needed to learn about and have still kept learning about and um it's different than music for me but I yeah I always have sang and it's always been something that makes me really happy to do um and I could sing every second of every day but I'm sure I annoyed <laughs> people all the time. I don't know about that. I think you have a pretty amazing voice, so we, would, we wouldn't mind if you Thank sang you. a little bit, right? <laughs> you know, you're, you've also been successful as an, an actress. Yes. I mean, you, you kind of put it on the side right now, but you have been spending the last few years in, in acting, yeah. and um, what has that brought to you, and you were just in a Netflix Yeah, uh, I just, movie. it just came out yeah. in March. Um, that was, oh my gosh, one of my favorite projects ever of all time. Um, no, yeah, I'm, I love acting so much, and i juggling this yeah because music and acting are two very different things so I'm kind of juggling both things um but it, it's been cool like I learn so much acting like so so much um and yeah I'm doing the new Transformers movie which is weird and crazy and so cool that and I can't is believe incredible. it incredible congratulations yeah. on Thank that you. so you cast in the Transformers spinoff yes and, uh, what do you have you started shooting who are you going to play I start next week okay. um I can't tell you who I'm gonna play because oh. it's super secret and they told me I can't but um it's it's gonna be a really great movie it's really funny 
Like, the script is kind of funny, and I think that's interesting because I've never, I don't know, like, they're always such great movies, and I'm a huge action movie girl, so when I heard that I got this, I was so pumped. Um, but yeah, Haley Steinfeld is our lead, and she's just wonderful and such a sweet person, and we actually got to talk about juggling our music and acting careers a little bit, which, because we're very similar in that way. We both have both things going on. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's about, like, having fun at everything you do and just really making sure you're doing it for the right reasons and for yourself. Absolutely. You know, I was looking at your Twitter feed and I, I saw that you um, spoke out a little bit about the events that hope happened over the weekend. And, yes. um, you know, what can you say about that and how it affected you when you're seeing this is again, this is in Charlottesville, Virginia, yes. um, what you saw go on. Um, I'm having a, a little bit of a hard time, obviously, but um, I guess I feel selfish sitting here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because one, there's not a lot I can do. I could go there, um, but it's scary to want to go be a part of something like that because you could just wake up one morning and then you could lose your life, and that's a very real possibility in today's world, which saddens me, and I think that it's completely insane. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess um, going from you know, where we were for the last four years to now, it's very heartbreaking to me, and I... Um, I actually was so obsessed with Barack Obama that I stood in line um, when he was being elected, like before he was elected, and he was just campaigning. And I stood in line for hours, and I didn't make it to see him, and I oh. cried. I was 10 years old. I cried more than anything in the world. And then I went up to him um, at the White House, and I told him that story because oh. I later, four years later, got to kind of see him there because that was 2008. Yeah. Um, and so going from that to this, it's, it's very heartbreaking to me. Um, and I think lives are being lost. And I also think there's a lot of people in the world that truly need educated. And like to all my peers and people my age, I also want to tell them to remain educated, remain mm -hmm. up on everything, read, 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 read learn um, because that's what's going to save you mm -hmm. and honestly no matter what your beliefs are um, it just comes down in my opinion to being a human and compassionate mm -hmm. and kind to other people um, and just truly having love and that might sound cheesy because I feel like everybody kind of says that and just like yeah I love everyone mm -hmm. but I genuinely mean having compassion for somebody and mm -hmm. somebody other than yourself and somebody different than you because I mean just look at this room like there's just beautiful array of people in this room in general yeah. like in just yeah. just here um, and there's just so many beautiful people in this world and I think if we kind of stop looking just at ourselves and re remember that, I don't think anything could possibly go wrong. No, oh, that was well, very, very well said. Thank you. So we, it's, we have a couple of minutes left before I want to you know, toss to the crowd for questions. Yes. But what does the rest of the year look like for you? We're going to see you in the Transformers movie. Yes. We have this song out. Mm -hmm. When do we expect the new music? Uh, do you plan to tour? Um, I really want to tour. Yeah? So I guess we'll see about that. But um, I have hopefully my EP dropping before the end of the year, which would be very, very, very nice. Um, and I'm, I'm ready for people to hear like this other new stuff because the response to Dime has been so wonderful. So I hope they really like that too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm, I'm the f like one of the fall ambassadors for Forever 21, That's which cool. is really cool. That's cool. I'm actually wearing, this is so weird and not a plug, I swear, but I have a Forever 21 shirt on right now <laughs> that I turned into a dress from the <laughs> men's section. Um, but yeah, my team backstage was like, help me make it a dress. It was really fun. Cute. But thank you. But yeah, so that's going to be cool. I'm performing um, in Times Square for Fashion Week for that. So that's going to be oh, really that's awesome. That's nice. Yeah. Um, what's your approach to fashion in general? Oh, I love fashion. I like being like crazy. Like I just said, I'm in a men's t shirt. Like, like, I really like finding these styles because also um, I feel like that's relatable because so many people, like, want to find something new to wear or do. And, um, yeah, I always wear, like, really crazy weird shoes and just fun stuff. I always change my makeup. Just, yeah, I just want to, you know, be different and be a little... Be a little unique. Be a little unique. Yeah. Okay, so the X Factor, I can't believe it's been how many years since you've been on? Oh my God, six. Six years. So weird. So weird. Do you ever keep in touch with anybody from the show? Such a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, my really close friend, John Lindahl, is on tour with Logic right now, and I'm just like, friends doing great things. You know what I mean? I'm so happy for him. Um, and I love my, my one of my closest, well, two of my closest friends are the Brewer Boys, who were on with me and who I just became so close with and yeah so we still talk a lot and hang out and yeah I love them awesome all right yeah. well uh, we have some questions in the crowd here so oh, let's get God. it started yeah hi oh, thank you for being here oh thanks so, for having me how do, uh, mentally how do you approach uh, making music writing music mentally 
Psycho such a good question. Okay. This is such a good question. Um, I think I approach it, uh, I use my experiences. I think um, it's hard for me to sing other people's experiences. Um, and it's really easy for me to just feel how I feel. Um, I love I love songs that make me want to make music. Like, I love Etta James. And so when I hear her stuff, I get very inspired. Um, and sometimes in sessions, I'll, I'll have almost like writer's block, or I won't know what to do. And I'll just listen to tons of music, just everything from, from you know, beginning of music to all the way now. Um, and I just like to hear it and remember why I do this. And then I just start over and I restart and it. That usually really helps. Um, but the process is fun. I, I think um, lyric and melody are my very favorite things to do. Um, because I think what you say in music is really important, whether it's a song like Dime, which is kind of like on the funnier side, you know what I mean? It's kind of like very pun heavy and just cool and, and like funny. Um, but then you can say some really serious, powerful things with music as well. Uh, like one of my new favorite songs right now is Praying by Kesha, and I was just so touched by her and what she had to say. Um, and so I think it's very powerful, and that's kind of how I, that's how I look at it. Yeah. I like your LA hat, by the way. That's where I live. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Next. Hi. Hi. I really enjoyed your single. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, so in the past few years, was there ever like um, a time or a turning point or a certain decision you had to make that looking back you realized like really made a big difference in your career or in your life? That's such a good question. And yes, um, I realized that I needed to stop doing what everybody else told me to do and I needed to stop listening to who everyone else told me I was, and I just needed to breathe and remember, like I was saying, who I am and what I wanna do. Because nine out of 10 times, you are completely right and you know exactly what you need and what you want. And I always say, you wake up with yourself and you go to sleep with yourself. So if you don't like that person or you feel confused about who that is, that's a problem. So you have to really remember yourself and in those moments, like, reevaluate and breathe and move on. And that was the most powerful thing that I've done. Yeah, great question. Amazing, okay, one last question. Awesome. Hey, hey. how are you? I'm well, good, thank you. I know, it's, it's weird, right? It's like acoustic. It's a little loud. <laughs> um, my question is because you actually mentioned Etta James as one of your influences, so I'm curious who has inspired you with your music and are we gonna hear their sounds on your new music? Ooh, that last one's a great question. I've never had that question. I like, that was great. Um, so some of my main influences at this moment are Kendrick Lamar and SZA. I love them. Um, and if you notice, their lyrics are so powerful and they just go off in songs and they're hard to remember, which makes you know that they're good because you gotta really think because they're, they're, they're speaking about their lives and, and you get a real insight to who they are. Um, so yeah, I think you'll definitely hear little influences here and there. I love bringing things like that in. Sometimes I'll even listen to drum loops like on repeat in the studio and be like, I can remix this and use this for my song. But yeah, that's a great question. I definitely, I hope, I hope you get to hear some of their sounds on there. Well, we do too. So uh, thank you for your questions. Rachel Curl, thank, thank you for coming you. by Bill today. Thank you. Give it up one more time. 